Welcome back. So my favorite way to use alcohol, alcohol inks is more in a fluid format. So these are actually my three favorite colors to do them with. And I don't do them together. I do them separate. But what I like about these three colors is when you're using them, like they have the different colors that pop out of them, some pinks and some light blues and that sort of thing. So I really love using these because I really love seeing the different colors that come out of them. So I think today I'm going to do the denim one just because I feel like it right now. Um, I'm not gonna use ink blending solution, the alcohol ink blending solution for this. The reason being, you tend to use a whole lot of this, and this, um, when you use a lot of it, you tend to get a sticky surface. It doesn't really totally dry up, and that's because there's resins in there. So I want it to completely dissipate and dry up, so I'm gonna use 99% um, isopropyl alcohol. I have it in a mister, and I also have it in a dropper bottle. And then I'm gonna use uh, um, metallic with it. And I think for this one, I am going to use a rose gold metallic. Um, I don't do that usually toward, till towards the end, but just so you know what color I'm using. And again, you wanna make sure you hear that little metal ball rolling because you wanna make sure that all the micas in there are being mixed up in there. So the first thing I do, make sure your surface is clean. I am working with Yupo, which is the uh, synthetic surface. It is a plastic paper. So I'm going to mist the entire surface with some of my isopropyl alcohol. I am going to, oops, I clearly had some dried ink on there, but that's okay. I'll leave that cap off. And I have this ink blower that I'm going to use to push the ink around. Now, you could use um, canned air for this. That totally works. It does get a little bit expensive if you, if you tend to use this or do this a lot, but it absolutely works, especially if you're just wanting to try it out and see um, if you like this technique. Now, the other thing you can use is an empty squeeze bottle from the dollar store, but just take a look at this. As you're squeezing, see how quickly this reinflates and how slow this reinflates. So this will work, but you might get a little bit frustrated because the bottle doesn't reinflate nearly as quickly as the little tube here does. The other thing that you can use is a compressor, and I actually have a compressor below my desk that I re regularly use, um, but because that's not available to everyone, I'm not using it for this class, as well as the fact that it's got quite a bit of noise to it when you're using it, so I don't want to be drowning out my voice with the sound of the air compressor. Now, I love what's happening here. This I don't necessarily love, but that's just because I had some dried ink there, but take a look at this. You see how there's pinks coming out there? There's I love all the different shades of whatever color you're using. There's all sorts of different pinks within here, and I love how these colors do that. Now, you could certainly use several different colors if you wanted to um, use a few different colors at a time. Absolutely, you can do that. I typically stick to one maybe two colors simply because that's my personal preference but not because you have to it's whatever you want this is your art piece you do whatever you want now you notice how I had those bits of the dried alcohol ink that were marring this I just use a little bit of my isopropyl alcohol and they're not completely gone you can still see them there but it's faded them enough so they they don't make up as much of the piece as they did before and you're just going to keep doing this whole process until you have a result that you like so I'm going to add a few more drops of the blue in the center for some reason I typically work in this format I typically go from the top left to the bottom right and I don't really know why I just like the way it looks I like having some white space um, again that's personal preference if you want to completely cover your surface you absolutely can there's no reason you couldn't do that. And I've seen some absolutely beautiful work from people that have that have done that. Um, once again, completely personal preference. There's no right or wrong to this really. It's your artwork. So I did add some of the rose gold and I like how that's bringing out some of the pink colors that are already in there. I do have a few chunks of that rose gold that are all just in one spot. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of the blending solution on top of that. Now most of the time I, while I'm working on my pieces, I will use the dropper 
throughout the process. The mister gets used at the beginning because I like to have a wet surface to start off with. That's just my personal preference. I've seen a lot of people that don't do it. If I get to a point where I don't like anything on there, I can just take the mister and mist the entire thing um, to kind of rehydrate the ink and start over. Now I like how it's turning out, but I want to add a little bit of blue here and a little bit in there. So I'm going to put the color there. And I typically put the color down first and then put a drop of the alcohol just to help spread it around. And you saw I did both pieces, but I could just do this section, work on it, and then do that section and work on it. I like letting it kind of sit for a minute while I work on one section before I start moving the other section around. And I like to make sure that I have some spot, spots that are light. Like I love having some light spots and some dark spots. It just adds some more depth and some more texture to your piece. And you can see I'm kind of moving it from both sides. I'm gonna add a touch of the rose gold metallic there. And you want to be careful with the metallics because they can kind of take over a project if you accidentally use too much. So I always think less is more. I can always add more, but it's really hard to take away the metallics for sure. You can take away some of the color by adding some blending solution, but it's really hard to take away the metallics. So I think, actually I'm going to add a tiny little bit more up here little drop of the rose gold just to kind of balance out this part right down here and then a little bit of blending solution I just want to add it a little bit more dark right up at that top part there and you can see with this tool you actually have quite a bit of control over where it's going um, and part of the secret of that is not using too much alcohol. If you use far too much alcohol, it's just going to cut, you're not going to be really able to contain it. So once you kind of have your first base layer down, you really want to be working on one section at a time. And then you don't necessarily need to wait till it's completely dry because this particular part, particular spot right there is not completely dry, but you can tell when I blow on it, it's not actually moving. So it's, there's no harm in it. And, or there's no risk of it moving around while I'm working on something else. I'm gonna soften that line there. And you may get to a point where you've done something and you feel like you've completely ruined your project. Part of knowing when to stop is practice. And I've certainly done it where I have gotten to a point where I wish I had stopped sooner, but again, it's all learning. Now to clean up your desk, there's you'll notice when I lift this up, there's um, alcohol that has seeped underneath your surface. To clean up your desk, it's really easy, just a mister with isopropyl alcohol, or you can use some hand sanitizer to do that. And then just wipe it up with some paper towel. I'm not really liking this little ridge here, so that's what I'm trying to work with and around. Oops. Didn't necessarily mean to add that much, but again, you just work with what you got. And you see how I keep blowing it out just to get some spots that are a little bit lighter, some that are a little bit darker. It just adds more depth to your piece. And these ones that I'm working on for this um, course are smaller pieces. They're typically card size. I'll do, I think, a project at the end where I do an artwork that you could put on your wall. Um, but that's just because it's a manageable surface to be practicing with. You can absolutely do these on larger surfaces and frame them. Um, but when you're first starting out, it's much less intimidating working by with something that's four and a quarter by five and a half than it is working with something that's say 12 by 18 or something. 
So these techniques don't need to be limited to a small size. They certainly can be done on a larger size, a larger scale. But like I said, this is much less intimidating when you're starting out and just figuring out how the inks flow and how you can move them and how you can manipulate them. So I'm just going to do this tiny little bit here to let that dry. And I'm liking exactly how this is turning out. So once this is completely dry, I'll turn it into a card and then I'll show you what I did. So this is what I did with it here. Super simple card. I just mounted it to a complimentary mat and then I just die cut some of the um, flower silhouettes from um, a Sizzix die that I will list in the supply list. But again, super simple card. I could easily add a little sentiment here if I want or on the inside of a card. And this certainly doesn't need to be on the front of a card. It could be a piece of artwork that you frame. That would totally work too. What I would have loved to do would be stamp and emboss on this, but because this is plastic, it doesn't like heat. So um, you can't stamp and emboss on it because to emboss to melt the powder is too hot and this would end up warping. So die cuts are a better thing to put on top of it. You can do a different technique with stamping that we will get to in a different lesson. But nice simple card, but I love that background.